What is up guys? Today I'm going to be talking about C857 Software Quality Assurance, exactly my journey, how I passed, and what I would do if I were to do it again. And hopefully those of you who are taking this course may or may not get some value out of this. So on June 8th, I have completed this test with a 85%-ish, and you can see which parts I got exemplary at and whatnot. So overall, this is probably the easiest WGU test I've taken. This might be the easiest one total. I don't know if it's, eh, it probably was this one. I'm not quite sure. I, about 10 days to study. I did do a little pre-study. I definitely know I could have got by without pre-studying. I kind of feel like I wasted a little time pre-studying, but you know, it's, it's fine. It's whatever. So all I did for the pre-study is actually memorize about 80% of the quiz sort answers. I just knew the answers. I didn't really know why the answers were the way they were. I just memorized the answer. I probably would have been better off simply reading the book if I was to pre-study it. You can go on Reddit and find exactly what the book is called. It's called the art of software testing, I believe. And there are some people who've linked the PDF on Reddit. I'm not going to do that because I'm I don't really want to get in trouble, but you can go find it. So essentially what I did was after having pre-studied those, those quiz or books about, or quiz or questions about 80%, I just skimmed the, 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 the book. And then there's a second book, I think something with CMMI, I believe so. And you just read chapter 13 of that. Like most Reddit posts will tell you to do this. And that's exactly what I did. After that, I watched both webinars and I actually really liked the webinars because it gave you a great overall picture and what you're looking for. Honestly, in my opinion, if you can memorize just those two webinars, that's about 50% of the test just right there. So I would highly recommend watching the webinars, taking notes on the webinars, and essentially using those webinars as a guide. After that, there's also study notes and guides provided. There's two study notes and they're called I think they're literally just called study guides within the course material or when you go in the course search, there's, there's two of them. I would use that. I use them. I read through them, looked at them and tried to eventually like conceptualize everything that I watched with the webinars and what I skimmed through the book and constantly using the study guide in the notes provided essentially as that was essentially my book after that. Now, I then took the practice assessment throughout this whole process. I did it before. I did it after the webinars and whatnot. But at some point, I figured out why everything I got was wrong and why everything I got was right. So what I mean by that is if you saw a question that says, is functional testing white box or black box? I'm, I'm kind of making something up. Probably, that's probably a bad, bad example. All right, let, let me give you an example, a different example. Uh, is, is, is equivalence testing black box or white box testing? I believe the answer is black box testing, but what I would do is if that was on the practice assessment, I would control F, control search, the the term black box, uh, sorry, the term equivalence testing, and I would read that those one or two paragraphs in the book. So it kind of reconceptualizes exactly what I read previously. And I do that for every single question. I get a question about peer inspections. I would then read, I would, you know, see what, if I got it right, that's fine. And then I'd go read the two or three paragraphs that's actually within our book to fully conceptualize it. I have an idea of what peer ratings is. My study notes probably gave me a good overview, but then let me just read exactly what the book says. And that's how I actually kind of went through and conceptualized the whole thing. Now, after I did that with the practice assessment, I took it again until I could essentially get 100% on the practice assessment. I then went through quiz soar and did the exact same thing as what I just mentioned with the pre-assessment. So if there was a question on circulation reviews, what's a circulation review? I would look through the book and find the two paragraphs on circulation reviews, read that, and then just kind of skip to the next question. That way, essentially what was happening is I had read it here, I'd watch the webinars where it may or may not have commented on it. I had overviewed it in my study guides. I had read it a couple times at that point. And then when I went to the practice assessment, I then every time that type of question came up again, all of a sudden I had read those paragraphs like five or 10 times before I ever took the test. And that's essentially what helped me take the test. As you see here, I was able, these are my attempts at the, at the practice assessment. I, like I said, I took it throughout and whatnot. And I think these two, I got 100% on both of them. Uh, but that was just because I 
taken it so many times at that point. Now, what would I do if I had to do it over? No pre-study. This is probably where most of you guys fall in. This is what I would do. So take it with a grain of salt because everyone studies differently. Every practice assessment is differently. So what I would do is I would actually watch the two webinars first. You can go under, when you get in the course search, it's under webinars. And then I know this probably doesn't mean much to you right now. But there is a chart, I believe it's chapter 6.3. There's a chart that has you memorize the software development life cycle and the tests that go each through each one. Um, there's a, if you find, if you look this course up on Reddit, you're going to find a lot of people talk about this right here. This is how I remembered it. Roy S P M asked him literally how I remembered it. Each one correlates to the test in which it's done. This is the requirements goes to the acceptance objectives, go to the system, external specification goes to the integration, uh, spec, uh, system design goes to, uh, integration or sorry, mess external function system to integration program man i don't even remember what this one is that's how long it's been since i took the test uh yeah program something anyways it doesn't really matter that's beside the point but you memorize this for the test first thing you do when you take the test is you write this on your whiteboard now what i do after watching the the webinars and memorizing this kind of this thing here is i'd actually skim over the guides and you're gonna read a bunch of definitions that really don't mean that much to you you're gonna read that you're gonna you're you're gonna read uh, that equivalence partitioning splits everything up in two, and you're gonna be like, all right, cool. After I read that two or three times, I would then read the book, exactly what's recommended. I think it's either chapters one through nine or chapter uh, or one through eleven. Doesn't really matter. I'd read the book at least once. You don't need to skim it too par super hard, and then I would hopefully you probably took the practice assessment first thing go through the practice assessment find the answer to each one doesn't matter whether you got it right or not go find the answer in the book or in the study guides that tell you why that is the answer that's correct now then if you have time you would do the quiz or questions as many as you can to consolidate now you're probably wondering like man how can you go back and forth with the quiz or because it's actually kind of hard well let me tell you i actually put the quiz or questions in a quizlet and what I actually did is I imported them to Anki. I like that user interface for multiple choice. Um, you could just Google how to import Quizlet to Anki. There's a bunch of videos on that. Now, I do want to say that 5% of these are wrong for some reason. So if that's why I think it's very important for you to go through the book. And that's actually what helped me to conceptualize and consolidate all this stuff. Uh, essentially, if I was looking at indicate whether the following about module testing is true, test case are supplemented by applying black box methods. Now, I would go literally go to the module testing, read the two or three paragraphs and see whether it says black box methods are used. Now, if it says white box testing is used and the answer to this says it's false, I would then put, drop in the chat GDP to see if it says it's wrong. And then I would then, I essentially changed the answers in Anki, but I never reflected it on my Quizlet. That's why some of these Quizlets are incorrect. Only about 5% of them, but still nonetheless, if you, if you feel like something is wrong, it probably is. I don't know if that was user error. That could have been me copy and pasting incorrectly or whatnot. But yeah, that is it. Again, I passed this on June 8th, about 10 days of study. I got about 85%, 48 questions, took me 18 minutes. And after this, all I have is the ITIL and the capstone. Now, today, the day I'm recording this is June 14th. As I said before, I actually pa I passed this class, was it June June 8th? Uh, I've, I've since actually passed the ITIL. So I'm going to be making a video on the ITIL probably right after this video. And after that, just the capstone. So I'm almost done. It feels really good. Honestly, I had the call. I, I had, after I... I, I was doing software quality assurance. As I was doing it, I talked to my program mentor and we got ITIL and my capstone activated. So at some point I had all three of these final classes activate. And I won't lie, it kind of felt a little emotional. Like, wow, I'm at the end of this road. So I'm looking forward to finishing. It's been a great journey. And I, and I appreciate all of you guys who have stuck around or, or who are joining now because hopefully I can continue to provide value to everyone watching. So thank you guys so much. And I'll see you in the next video.